Well, I worked some more with this uh, tiny Slayer exciter and got it to light up a fluorescent off of a AA battery. And so I decided to mount it on a board. And uh, Johnny uh, Davro is calling it a micro uh, Slayer exciter because it's using such a small coil here arrangement. And it is two coils. Somebody asked me about the coil arrangement. And there, the red is the secondary and the two loops around that are the primary and that's just a solid core hookup wire. Uh, this is 32 gauge. It's about an inch and three quarter long and inside there is a ferrite rod and the situation will not work unless you have one of these ferrite rods and that's a ferrite rod that uh, I got at Radio Shack. I put a little stick on it to adjust it with but it's a choke, and <clears throat> I took the wire off the choke and just used the rod part, but you have to have that to tune that with, and uh, it won't work without a ferrite rod. It won't work with an iron rod or a bolt or a nail. you got to use a ferrite rod. Anyway, I fiddled around with the circuit a little bit more and just went to a uh, standard uh, 2N222 transistor, and it actually worked pretty darn good. You can get these at Radio Shack or anywhere. And then I added a little switching diode here. Johnny recommended it, and it did help quite a bit. But I left the LED on as an indicator light. And the uh, resistance is uh, 22K, and it's an extremely simple circuit. But you've got to do it right, or it won't work. And the uh, one coil is round clockwise, and the other one is round counterclockwise. And if you can't remember how you did it, just switch the leads here when you get it built, and it should fire right up. And like I say, you must have a ferrite core for this tiny one to work. The other Slayer exciters, you can get away with nothing on the bigger ones, but not these little ones. You've got to have a ferrite core. And I think Slayer was the first one that uh, showed that recently, but I actually did this about a year ago. I was working with these adjustable ferrite cord uh, inductors. But anyway, this is pretty darn neat. Uh, this little thing here, this uh, cement battery thing, it only puts out about a volt <coughs> and um, in the microamps range, but it makes a great receiver tower for one of these Slayer exciters. And uh, <coughs> that's a good use for one of these when they go dead. You can use that or a paperweight. <laughs> so anyway, but there's the <coughs> there's the wire for the, the um, secondary 32 gauge. It's fine... Uh, fine wire. Johnny's using a uh, finer wire than that. And then I'm just using solid core hookup wire for the primary. So anyway, that's uh, that's the little setup for that thing there. And um, a couple things I did want to show real quick. I'm going to disconnect this wire there. There goes the neon. This is still on. I'm going to disconnect that. Now that goes pretty darn dim. And then I'm going to take it over here. You can see that it's out, completely out. There's nothing going on with that battery thing there at all. It's just uh, hooked up to the can. Nothing at all. But you put it over here next to the exciter, and there it comes on again. You hook it up to the negative rail, basically, on this, uh, on this exciter, and now it comes on super bright. So anyway, just uh, things I wanted to share with people is that once I got this thing to light up a fluorescent, I went ahead and put it on a board and uh, made a little project out of it. Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck with this if you're trying to build one.